Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in. I uh, hope that everybody's having uh, a good start to the week, whether you started yesterday uh, like myself or you're kicking off the week this morning. I hope that you are clear on what your goals are. I want you to understand that regardless to progress or lack thereof on last week, you have a new beginning, a new start, a new opportunity to refocus yourself and continue on your path. Uh, I wish I could make a promise to you that once you get things figured out, once you get things figured out unsmoothly, there are no hiccups, there are no setbacks, everything is just grand in life. But unfortunately, that is not how things work. There is a consistent continuum that you are on and this continuum is a tension that is completely pulled in opposite directions and you move forward and you move backwards and you take five steps forward and you may take a few steps backwards and there will be a few times in life that you'll take a whole leap backwards and it will be very frustrating and you'll have to regain your composure regain in many instances your confidence and you'll have to rebuild it's uh the i think the statistics show that the average millionaire goes broke uh, three times over the course of their life, meaning that they make some bad business decisions, some bad investments, uh, some bad moves, and they have to start over. Um, that's life. Um, you know, now someone else is starting over may be different than yours. You have to be aware of the fact that you are unique in a number of different ways in your perspective, in your paradigm, in the way that you perceive things in life. And so what's starting over for you may not be starting over for someone else. And so someone else's starting over may not be as intense as yours or maybe even more intense. But the idea of the fact that you look at something and say, man, I've gone so far back that I've started over. That's all it, all it, all that matters because you're the one that's perceiving it. You're the one that's going to have to confront it. You're the one that's going to have to deal with it. So it's imperative that you understand that. So I'll first and foremost want to encourage you. Today is Monday, so that means it's Money Monday. We're going to talk about um, the process, the principles, the importance of understanding how money operates. And one of the fallibilities kind of ties into what I just shared. One of the fallibilities about money is that once you got money, you always have money. Once you got money, nothing else goes wrong. Once you have money, you can fix everything. And, and so many other fallibilities. The truth of the matter is money is an instrument. Money is an instrument through which you are able to do things that do matter to you. If there was no need to do anything or have anything that had any value or importance to you, money would be useless. So money is simply an instrument. You cannot view money as the end all be all. You cannot view money as the only instrument. And what I've learned is that even when money is funny or when there's a situation where there's more of a need than there is a uh, liquid assets, so to speak. There are still other ways to get things done. The biggest resource you have isn't your money. Your biggest resource that you have is your resourcefulness, your ability to get things done even when you don't have the traditional sources available to you. And we will talk about a lot of those things over the course of the uh, remaining weeks in this year as we discuss money on a bunch of different levels. What I want to talk to you about this morning is important. But before I get to that, I want to remind you of the fact that book number 21, well, actually, book number 22 is already out, but we're uh, book number 21 is the second book in a two book series. Book 20 was Critical Mass. If you haven't gotten that, 
Uh, the link is going to be in the description box. Book number 21 is the follow-up to Critical Mass I Am, which focuses on self-talk. What you speak and how you speak, it will have a massive impact on how your reality develops for you. It doesn't mean it's not a magic word. It's not a magic potion. It doesn't mean you can say things and magically make things be the way you want them to be. It means that it's going to impact your perception of your reality. It's going to uh, set in motion the declarations of your life when you sit up and you speak things. Uh, you are literally speaking them into the beginning of existence. You have manifested them in the fifth dimension. Uh, for those who understand that, that means that it is now a reality in a certain area of your life, even though you have not fully manifested it in the third dimension, which means you can touch it, you can feel it, you can use it um, and whatever. But it starts with you actually thinking it and then speaking it so be careful what you speak and so i am is about self-declaration i am talks about the power of self-declaration and how it works in your life you know how your thinking impacts your speech and your speech impacts your life and it's so important to understand those elements as a part of the totality of how we engage life um if the last year hasn't reinforce some lessons that I've already learned earlier in my life and throughout my life. Uh, I don't know what would. Uh, it has been a constant movement of uh, I, isol I, you know, isolating, um, isolating realities up one minute, taking a hit the next minute, trying to make the adjustments, trying to make the moves feeling pretty good and comfortable and then getting another blow and having to make adjustments, but that's life. And the thing is, we have to be very careful about this expectation of once you get to a certain state that it's smooth sailing, you will have momentum. And you can see that, I guess, as a state of smooth sailing, but you got to know that the next challenge is coming and that if you're not careful, you get so caught up in the smooth sailing that you won't be prepared for the next hit. And I don't mean go around thinking the sky is falling. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you have to be prepared for life's challenges because you don't get to circumvent the challenges of life that's not how things work you have to actually be prepared to take on the challenges of life because in taking on the challenges of life is where you actually get the growth it's where you get to learn it's where you become more uh independent and stronger it's where you develop the sense of confidence that says you know what i'm built for this this is a tough time, but I'm built for this. I'm going through something now, but I'm built for this. This was not what I expected, but I built for this. I hate that I'm here, but I'm built for this. And that is so important. If you get to a place and you're not prepared for that, this is not what I expected moment. This is what not what what this is what I this is not what I expected can literally take you down to some of the darkest places you could ever imagine. You have to be prepared to deal with the unexpected. And so that's the first thing I'm gonna put with you. But what I want to talk to you about now in the way of money is the idea of how you go about getting money and right now is a ideal time to talk about it because money is scarce for a lot of people uh, whether you're a business owner whether you're an employee whether you are a ceo you're finding out that money has a certain scarcity to it now money has a certain level of volatility to it now the market isn't responding the way that everybody wants it to respond uh some people are taking hits in small business people are taking hits in the stock market people are taking hits in national chains it's it, there's no one that's going unaffected in an in, no, no industry that's going unaffected there may be a few companies that haven't been affected there may be some companies that are actually benefiting from it because they are ahead of the curve and they're actually capitalizing on the things that are going wrong and literally turning those into profit uh that that that's a part of what's happening what i want to talk about is the fact that you can't get so desperate that you take the idea but you don't have structure with it and when i talk about structure i'm talking about a blueprint in other words when you get an idea for a house your first move isn't to call the builder or the contractor and say this is the house i want i want a room here a room here i want it that big this big this small this high and i want it and i, I need y'all to give it to me no 
when you sit up and you decide that you've got your dream house that you want to build and you've got the image in your head, you sit down with the architect and the engineers to see how it's going to be done so that the house number one looks exactly the way you want it to look and it has specs and measurements so that it can actually come together and be built but also that it's structurally it has a level of structural integrity so you need the structural integrity that uh you need the dynamics to actually connect and add up that everything comes together and fits inside of the space that's provided and so you have a blueprint drawn up the blueprint is what you give to the contractors and the builders and then they take it from there and the contractors and the builders are going to call the electricians and the plumbers and they're going to come lay the piping out then they'll pour the foundation then they'll do the framing and then they'll come and they'll start filling it in for you know it over time this thing comes together but it comes together first and foremost because it started with a blueprint and then you know and one of the things that i do with my clients is i do a personality assessment and a disc assessment a disc assessment deals with the type of person you are when accomplishing task uh, D stands for dominance I stands for influence S stands for steadiness C stands for cautious or compliant so everybody has cautious and compliant so everybody has a person a dominant personality of the people who think outside the box uh, very well do what they very rarely do what everybody else is doing and they make moves those are going to be your people who are out at the top of things but what if you if, but if you pay attention every dominant personality has a I, S, and a c that works for them the c will hardly ever be the dominant personality that even when the c is the business owner they will normally be fulfilling the their their, their business will be working for people with d per, personalities or d uh, modalities that need structure and direction see what having a blueprint does the seeds are the blue the people who provide the blueprint in other words you got if you look the person who has this unbelievable limitless ability to think of things normally is what you will call a right brainer a person who ignores rationale reason and history and it, it, it could have been said a million times that it's impossible and the person on the right side of the brain will become creative enough to create it. Your inventors are white brainers. Your artists are right brainers. People with highly creative mindsets that ignore what the norm is are normally right brainers. The problem with right brainers is they lack structure. If they're predominantly right brain, that's not their strength. While they can practice it, while they can develop it, their natural proclivity is to come up with these unbelievable concepts and find ways to get them into the, the realm of reality. Well, the way that they do that is by finding people who are. I tell people all the time, if you put too much emphasis on strengthening your weaknesses and you start to neglect your strengths, you lose momentum. If your strength is something, focus on your strength, operate on your strength, and then associate yourself with people who are strong in areas where you're weak. You need to learn how to operate in a team. We spend so much time trying to be the the end all be all and all so that we can say I did something that we very rarely ever truly accomplish anything that is super spectacular because we get caught up in the idea of I want it to be about me I want my name on it and the thing is sometimes it takes multiple people with multiple gifts and multiple talents and multiple strengths and so in essence the, the D personality find somebody with a C personality first before they even deal with the I and the S. They find somebody with a C personality or they may get an I personality, an influencer, somebody they can sell their vision to and get them to find a C. But at the end of the day, the C is where you start. The C is the compliance. The C is the, the cautious. The C is the person that's going to consider all the variables. The C is the person that's going to sit up and lay out the blueprint. And so what you need to see for is the blueprint. The blueprint is what gives your idea, if you are a D, a dominant personality or a dominant uh, uh, performer, you, you, your idea needs structure, your idea needs scheme, and your idea needs direction. The C person gives it that. So in other words, you, if you're not a C person, you need to be 
aware and connected to a C person that can take the idea and give you the structure, the schematics and the direction. Why? Because it's going to have the contingencies and all of the things that could happen and go wrong and prepare you for them. It doesn't mean everything's going to go perfect. It means that you'll be better prepared to deal with things when they don't. It means that you will have a clear idea of where you're headed and not just an idea of what you want. And that's the difference. So many of us want to just act on an idea and we haven't looked at the schematics. We haven't even created the schematics. We don't have the metrics to measure whether we're moving in the right direction or not because many of us don't even know what the direction is. We have a clear idea of all of that. The thing is, we tend to look down on people who are C's. If you are a, a radical thinker, and I am, I had to learn that that's not going to be my strength being very calculative and projecting all of the problems and all that stuff. My mind is to sit up and say, if I can see it in my mind, I can do it. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I can do it. And what I have to do is I have to calm myself down enough to say, okay, now I need to figure out how, because at the time that I'm talking about doing something and if it's never been done before, or I've never seen it done before, my thing is just focusing on uh, telling myself that it can be done. That's the first thing. The first win for me is saying, despite what people are saying it can be done okay that's the first thing now and at the time like les brown says when you are making up in, making up in your mind that you're going to do something spectacular do something great do something phenomenal do something that very few or no people have done before how you're going to get it done at that time is none of your business and that's something that a lot of us get caught up in that's what makes uh, C personalities or people who have C makeups not very good at initiating uh, innovative things because they operate on the principles and the confines of reality and what can and cannot be done. And so you, th that's how they focus. But when you take a D personality and put it with a C personality, the C personality gives insight to the D personality but the D personality gives confidence to the C personality that you can actually step outside of those when you do it critically and when you do it creatively and when you do it with an understanding of what you think is keeping you inside the box now you know specifically how to come outside of the box because you simply uh, super uh, impose or reverse it and so that's how you, you, you sit up and operate. But here's the thing. So the first thing that a blueprint does is it gives you an idea. So when you're sitting up and you're discerning, okay, how are you going to make money? How are you going to create wealth? How are you going to build your business? How are you going to fund your business? Then you've got to have one person who's going to be the creative mechanism. Now, if you are the C personality, you just simply have to be willing to look up a person or look up on the internet and find creative ways to do something and then you put your blueprint mindset to how you will make it work for you but if you are the creative mind you need to find somebody who's going to think of all the contingencies that you just don't naturally think of the person who has a deep personality ain't trying to think of what's going to stop them because deep down inside they don't feel anything can and what they'll do is they'll bump their heads a whole lot more than they have to they'll eventually what i can tell you about a deep personality if you give them something and they say they're going to do it and they really want to do it, they're going to get it done. But what you don't want is to spend 10 years doing something that could have took you two to do. That's the difference is when you have a C who can do a blueprint for you, you get it done a whole lot quicker. Can you imagine having an idea of what type of house you want to build and just having somebody go start throwing stuff up based off of what you told them in your head and the image they got and then they get it done see, and they go, and you go, no, no, what I was really thinking was, do you know how many times you tear that house down before you finally get the house that you want? But now, if you got an architect with a blueprint, not only can you see the blueprints and see the measurements laid out in blueprints, now we have three-dimensional three, three, three architecture where you can literally see the erection on the outside, see the erection on the inside, and say, that's exactly what I want. Now you just simply give it to the contractors, the, the I's and the S's, and they go out and do it. They go out and actually do it exactly and it comes back and it may be a few little things that have to be tweaked, but you don't have to tear the whole structure down. 
Well, that's what you've got to realize is that the, the deeper, the deep person out of that, that, that dominant person in the, in, in the creative right brain mindset that says there's absolutely nothing impossible will find a way to get it done eventually. When you connect them with the C and you create the blueprint, all of a sudden they get it done quicker, more effectively, more efficiently. They become more sufficient because they understand. One of the things that I have prided myself in is finding people who will do that part of it and, and, and partnering with them in the things in which I've been most successful. I've partnered with people who will do the critical thoughts along the lines of blueprints. I come up with the idea, they figure out how that it needs to work. And it's nothing wrong with saying, that's not my strong point. Can I do it? Yeah. You know what? This is what happens. Instead of what I call uh, artificially educating and strengthening your weaknesses, I believe in authentically and experientially strengthening your weaknesses. And what do I mean by that? Okay, if you're strong in one area, operate in that dominate in that be the best you can do what you can to grow up because where you're strong at you will naturally be inclined to operate it will be the natural thing you turn to it will be what you love doing because you're just naturally good at it where you will struggle is the thing that you're natural not naturally good at here's the thing though you can go around and say okay i'm gonna strengthen my weakness you start reading books you start taking courses you start doing all that and it becomes encumbersome and it also causes you to neglect your strengths however when you choose people who are strong in the area that you're weak in and you choose to work with them association brings about assimilation when i'm around someone that's organized i tend to pick up tips on how to be more organized when i'm around someone who thinks methodically i learn how to think methodically i learn systematically to be a little more methodical than i naturally am it's an experiential natural authentic way of learning um social learning theory it's a part of social learning theory so you want to find people you focus on being your strength you find the people who are strong in the areas you're not and you build partnerships with those people to get things done one of the things that has really truly hampered the growth of people in this culture in this particular century is this idea of individualism i did this self-made that i ain't need no help i i i and don't realize you are limiting yourself because we are social creatures by nature we were meant to work together we were meant to operate as a unit every mammal species operates as a unit you can't find mammals that go solo when they go solo they are not nearly as effective as when they operate as a unit and that is exactly what you have to be able to do is put your desires to have your name on something your desires to get a pat on the back for your accomplishments aside and say am i really looking for a pat on the back or am i looking to be effective am i looking to be successful do i really want long-term success and if I need long-term success who can best help me facilitate this idea and then you find people and you connect with them if you are a C or I or S or D find the other letters some people will be dual and everybody has an element of all in them it's just how predominant each one is that tells you where you will have the proclivity to operate and you need to learn that if you don't uh, I do disk assessments you can get them done online uh, there you know there's a bunch of ways to find out your disk assessment uh, now do you have someone who has the expertise to help you learn how to use your knowledge of your disk that's the question. Find someone that's out there, whether it's me or not, is irrelevant today. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not here to sell you on working with me. If you want to work with me, good. If not, you still got to understand this if you want to get through things. A bunch of people are operating independently and don't understand why they are constantly frustrated because they only know one part of it. You got something. You got people who got the money but don't know how to use the money and they get frustrated. Everybody gets frustrated. You got people who have the idea and don't have the money and don't know how to get the money and they get frustrated. You got all the things in between. You have to have people around you that can see where you're at, understand your vision and say, OK, I know somebody or that that person that would love to work with you is me. And you've got to be willing to sit up and say, OK, I do this. Something my mentor taught me a long time ago. He said, 
uh, you're pretty good in math. Let me ask you a real simple mathematic equation. Uh, if you get it, you, things are going to be a lot easier for you in business. If not, it may be a little, little tough. Say so the natural proclivity of a person getting started in business is to keep as much of the profit to themselves as they possibly can. So a lot of people start their business as uh, sole proprietors. They want the business. They do all the work. They show up. They the they they're the accountant, the president, the the manager. They they they're everything because they're trying to keep as much of the profit as possible. He says, "Let me t show you the problem with that." He says, "What's the what's the most? One hundred percent of a hundred thousand, or ten percent of two million." I said 10% of 2 million is actually double 100% of 100,000. He says, so imagine that you only have so many hours in a day and you're going to be working to try to make things happen and you're just going to be limited by time at what you can do. So you cap out on what you're able to do at 100,000. You're working it, you're driving yourself in the ground, but you're getting all the profits, that $100,000 profit. Say you found three or four people that could help you take that profit up to two million and you kept, you paid them better than you paid yourself. Because all you want to do is come up with the idea and then give it to somebody. So you paid them everything and all you kept out of that 100% of the profits was 10%. You will still double what you're getting by doing all the work and trying to get through it. That's the mindset. Find people, share with people, get them to buy into what you're doing and then share with them and pay them well. And the times that I've been able to do that are the times I've been most successful. And the times that I get into these, these things where I'm trying to do it all on my own, either because I don't believe I have time to find people and bring them in, it's a harder struggle. And so I've seen both sides. And sometimes it's, it's natural. When, when you are a thinker that, that has these ideas and you want to move on them, You'll get out there and then realize, man, I'm moving, but I'm putting in so much energy, so much effort, and it's so much. I probably could be a lot better off if I find people who understand what I'm doing and I start to make the connections I need to make. In other words, I definitely not only need a blueprint, but I need other people that can help shoulder the load, that can help me think, that will call me when my ideas are a little off. You can get so caught up in your ideas that everything sounds good to you. I can tell you that. And while it'll it'll always have you in a place where there's nothing you aren't willing to do to make a move uh, within reason and, and within your, co your own personal uh, value system, what it could mean is that you're not seeing things clearly because you don't hold yourself to a certain place of evaluating what you're saying. You're just going for it. You know you'll get it. And eventually, if you're like me, you will get it. But it may take you longer. I'm sharing some life lessons with you, not just what I know because I've studied it, not because I've been taught, but because I've lived it. I've had these grand moments and I've had these moments where I fought harder. And when I fought harder, I look back and I evaluate now and sometimes I'm taking on more than I should. I'm trying to do it all on my own. I'm trying to totally will it to happen. And eventually, because I'm just that stubborn and I do have enough knowledge in areas of getting things done that I finally figure it out, the times in which I sit up and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Who's good at this? And you, you call them up and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. I don't know if you got time, but I would love to have you on board. It takes a little longer to put it together. It takes a little longer to map it out. But for some reason, it runs smoother. And you got to step back. Sometimes you got to step back from pushing and start looking at how you're going to construct the journey from that point forward. I'm at that place right now. Because when things start going wrong, I'm at that point where I'm sitting up and I'm thinking, I'm going to fix it. And I'm going to change it. And it's going to work. And eventually it does. But how much did it take out of me? How long did it take? How hard was it in rel in rel in relation to what it could be? So sometimes you got to sit up and say, okay, I'm going to have to actually stop moving. Sit back, look, make a few phone calls, do some research, and see what's going on. I need to think a little more critically, but I need to find someone else who's good at it. 
to examine where I'm at and where I'm going and what I'm doing it has nothing to do with experience and expertise. It has everything to do with your strengths. And you have to be willing to accept that. That whole idea that I have no weaknesses will get you in all kind of trouble. It will really mess you up because when you think you have no weaknesses and stuff start going wrong, you got to have an explanation for it going wrong. See, if you have no weaknesses, it should never go wrong, right? So you have to understand those things. It's immensely important to have that understanding. So what I'm trying to get you to understand here is that you need that. What else does it, what does it do? When you have a true blueprint, it will stop you from acting out of desperation. Again, I can tell you that from experience. When you don't have a blueprint, you start to act in desperation when things don't go your way. When things turn the opposite direction, you start making moves out of desperation, trying to save things, trying to put things up, trying to keep from going backwards, trying to keep from losing. And you make desperate actions. Very rarely do you make good decisions out of desperation. But when you have a blueprint, it's not out of desperation. You've come up with a great idea because you think outside of the box, but you've also put some reason to it. You've put some mechanisms of measurement to it. So now you can chart the progress and you can do something else. That's the next thing. When you have a blueprint, you have the ability to replicate. I can't tell you how important that is. Do you know how many people who have had a shot in the dark did unbelievably great and because they didn't have a blueprint on how they did it they didn't keep the metrics on what they were doing they didn't measure it that they can't replicate it they can't go back and do it. they keep trying but they have nothing to say this is how it was done so they can't replicate it they just happen to be doing something and it popped off and they've been trying to replicate it for years and it won't happen again because they never drew up a blueprint they never had the step-by-step -step mechanisms. I tell people all the time that you need to have a blueprint. In business, that blueprint is your business plan. And then you sit up and you measure the movements of your business plan. You chart your journey. You consistently keep a record of what's working, what's not working, how well it's working, what percentage of the market you gained when you did this, how exactly was this done. All of those things are important. So if you're not good at it, you got to find somebody who is. But when you have a blueprint or in, in a sense of business, a business plan, you sit up and you go, OK, this is how it's done. This is what needs to be done. And this is how it's done. And so now I mark it. So you are able to keep up with the metrics so you can replicate it. And when you keep up with the metrics and you've got something that works, you can consistently do it over and over again in different ways. You can do it with, for, for instance, I've used a, a system that works with my books over and over again with each book. I've done that same system and replicated it with courses and it goes on. And so you can replicate it. Here's the other thing that a blueprint does. It allows you to chart errors. When something doesn't work, you can mark and chart exactly where it happened, when it happened and what you did so that you know you don't do that again. But you're sitting up and you're just going out there and you're going, you may hit a home run, but you can't replicate it or you may strike out and you can't tell why. But when you are able to have a blueprint to operate on, you're able to look at it and say, okay, I gotta go back to the drawing board. I gotta do this, I gotta change this. This worked okay, but this didn't work well. This fit, but this did not. And you're able to look at it and eventually you get the blueprint that works for you. And that's in money, that's in business, that's in relationships. You can't sit up and just go willy nilly in anything and get consistency. So money is no different. You've got to have a long term blueprint. And yes, you're going to venture off of it. Yes, you're going to have times that the blueprint isn't working the way you thought, um, th thought it should work. You've got to have a mindset of understanding that life is going to throw curves at you. Winning in life isn't about the circumvention of the struggles, the vicissitudes, the, the, the setbacks, the disappointment, the delays. I tell people all the time, one of the most misconceived notions is that delay means denial. That because it's not happening now, it's not meant to be or it's never going to happen. You know how many people stop just short of the breakthrough? How many people literally sit up there and come this close and then say it's just not going to happen and just one more swing of the axe 
one more phone call, uh, one more video, one more paragraph, whatever, and they would have been there. You start something, you don't stop until you finish it. You may have to make some adjustments, but you keep going until you get it done. I tell people all the time, it isn't my knowledge that has sustained me for over 30 years of doing this stuff. My knowledge plays a major role, but it, it isn't my knowledge. It isn't my connections. It isn't my ability to convince people of anything. At the end of the day, it's because I am relentless. I take my lumps, my, bu my, my, my bruises, my setbacks, but I never fold. I have a plan A and there's no plan B on the table. And people say, you should always have a plan B. Should I? No, you should not. Now, your plan B is okay if you plan on meandering through the maze of mediocrity. Your plan B is okay if average is okay with you. And people say, why not a plan, plan B? I said, because we are human and our natural, natural proclivity is to take the path of least resistance. So when you have a plan A, your plan A is the ideal thing you want. Your plan B is if plan A don't work, I'm willing to accept this and do this. Well, guess what happens? The moment that plan A becomes tough, painful, frustrating, you will automatically gravitate towards plan B because it's going to be less painful. It will have less a less level of discomfort, and you will do that. But if plan A is it, you find a way to get it done. You go through the difficult moments. You experience the setbacks. You experience the disappointment, the pain. But you make up in your mind, I'm going to get it. I'm going to make the changes. I'm going to make the adjustments. I'm going to do what it takes. And you get there. It may take you a little longer than you anticipated. If you like me, you're always with these big ideas of how fast you can get something done. And you kind of jump out there and it never happens as fast as you want it to. But the thing is, it happens. Don't give up on it. Don't turn it loose. Don't walk back on it. Uh, one of my favorite biblical scriptures, whether you're into biblical scriptures or not, this is one of my favorite. It says that his uh, his soul, um, my soul takes no pleasure in those who draw back. But we are not of those who draw back. We are those who continue on into the saving of the soul. We are those who continue on until we finish what we started. We are those who continue on until what was set forth to be done is completed. That is it. We do not draw back. Life wasn't ever meant to be easy. It was meant to be fulfilling and rewarding. That's my challenge to you. Stand up, get yourself together, find your strengths, find people who are strong in the areas you're not, show them how you can be mutually beneficial to one another, and then start making things happen. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full. So at the end of this life, when I leave this place, I die on E. That means I'm not going to leave anything undone, any of my potential unfulfilled. I'm going to wake up every morning trying to give the world every ounce of me that it deserves that day. I'm not overextending myself. I'm simply spending what has to be spent as effectively and efficiently as I can each day. Because when those eight, 86,400 seconds for today are finished, they're gone forever. If I sit up and I take them casually, I become a casualty. If I sit up and I don't invest in them wisely, I get less in return or I get crap in return. I am going to wake up every day and give it my best. Some days my best ain't as good as other days. But I refuse to sit up and just meander through. I refuse to be down and beaten down. I refuse to sit up and look at the mistakes of yesterday and feel sorry for myself so to the point that I can't do anything today. That's the mindset that I want you to have. Wake up every day and give life all you have for it that day. Go to sleep on E and then rejuvenate and replenish as you sleep and wake up revived and renewed and ready to do it again. You're going to get so much more out of life than coasting through it. 
And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Don't forget to click those links. Go get that uh, the latest book. Uh, well, it's not the latest book. Book uh, book 21 now has been uh, replaced by book number 22, which is out and uh, available for sale. It was released last week. So it's a lot going on. I'm trying to get some things done. Uh, again, I encourage you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.